Uh, I'm here today for presenting uh, our paper entitled High Speed Stateful Packet Processing Approach for Terabits Per Second Programmable Switches. This is a joint work between Ecomatica University in Italy, the KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, and UC Luman in Belgium. Network functions virtualization is a, an essential paradigm of today's networks. Indeed, data centers, operators manage and build complex packet processing pipeline by combining together the network functions deployed in the infrastructure. The way these network functions are deployed directly affect the cost and the overall consumption of the network. So deciding how to deploy these network functions is a crucial task for network architects. In this context, one can choose to deploy a network function directly onto an ASIC switch or onto a dedicated device such as a general purpose CPU or FPGA. ASICs have higher throughput, which is measured in terabits per second, and a lower energy footprint than their counterparts, and this made them a very cost-effective solution. However, they suffered of some limits in terms of memory constraints and expressiveness that prevent operators by deploying complex functions directly onto ASICs. In fact, for complex functions, operators usually use eigenexpressive general purpose CPUs or FPGAs deployed on dedicated devices that do not present memory limits. However, usually the throughput of this device is capped by their network bandwidth. <clears throat> and so operators may need to deploy several instances of the same network functions in order, to, um, in order to process the required amount of traffic. And this inherently leads to an higher energy footprint and to a not cost-effective solution. Ideally, one would have a pipeline that retains the high throughput of an ASICs while supporting complex network functions in a cost-effective manner. So in this talk today, we will try to address the following question. Can we design a packet processing pipeline that handles one terabit per second of traffic on a single dedicated device? So let's consider the case of a switch directly attached to a dedicated NF server. Normally, when the switch receives a packet, it sends it entirely to the NF. However, as previously said, the throughput of this device is capped by its network bandwidth. So in order to process one terabit per second of traffic, we need to deploy more servers. And this is a not cost-effective solution. Our idea is that since many network functions only need to process packet headers, we can target them by sending only the relevant bits. To intuitively understand the potential of this approach, supposed to have a packet of 1.5 kilobytes with another size of 70 bytes. If we have a mechanism to send only the header to the NF, we can free up an amount of bandwidth that is enough for sending another 20 headers of the same size. Moreover, in this way, payloads do not pollute CPU caches, leading to an higher cache hit ratio. However, we still have to understand where we can store the payloads while headers are processed by the NF. A possible answer can be to store the payloads directly on the switch, as already proposed by the payload park system. However, the memory constraints of ASICs prevent from storing the entire payload on the switch, leading to few benefits. To see what is the impact of storing the payloads directly on the switch, we will examine a KDAT race. On the left, we have a picture showing the rate on the link between the switch and the network function in gigabit per second obtained by replaying the trace. On the right, you will see the format of the packet sent to the NF. We start by examining the baseline, which does not split packets, and that has a rate of 3.5 gigabit per second. Then we have the payload park-like system that can only store a small part of the payload into the switch, and that lowers the rate to about 3 gigabit per second. However, this result is far from the ideal solution where we only send the others to the NF and that performs 16 times better than the payload park-like solution. To fully exploit this potential, we need a way to extend the switch memory. So the next question is, how can we extend the switch memory? A first possible answer can be to use a dedicated external memory such as a night bandwidth memory. This is certainly the simple solution. However, as usual, the throughput of these devices is capped by their network bandwidth, so we may need to deploy several of them, and this inherently leads to an higher energy footprint and to an high cost solution. Moreover, in this way, we waste some parts of the switch that now need to be attached directly to a dedicated device. So this is a not cost-effective solution, and this is not our choice. Instead, we propose to leverage a disaggregated pipeline built combining the spare resources on shared servers. 
This seems a good idea since we design ribosome to be deployed inside data centers that present many spare resources. In this way, uh, we, we reach our goal, obtaining a better resource usage and without incrementing the energy footprint of the network with a low-cost solution. So this is the ribosome approach that Tusuma Rides proposes to extend a programmable switch with a dedicated NF processor and an external memory built on shared resources. So in this way, when the switch receives a packet, it can split it into other and payload and send the other to the NF while storing the payload into the external memory. Once the adder has been processed by the NF and sent back to the switch, the switch retries the payload from the external memory, recombines the packet, and routes it. We implemented the ribosomes data plane onto an Intel Tofino ASIC. All the network functions we used are implemented using FastClick on, in on Intel CPUs. To access the remote memory of the servers without affecting their CPUs, uh, we leverage the RDMA technology that uh, allow the access to our remote buffer without CPU intervention. The choice to use RDMA comes with several technical challenges, such as implementing an high-speed reliable RDMA connection directly from the programmable switch or, or exploiting multiple RDMA servers as packet buffer to overcome single server limits. If you are interested on how we address these challenges, please see the paper or directly check our the public implementation since these challenges are too technical. Now we have another challenge that is how to reconstruct millions of packets per second directly on the switch. And we still have to understand where we can store the headers while we are retrieving the payloads from the RDMA servers. Our proposal is to store the headers directly on the switch. However, we still have to demonstrate that this is feasible. So let's consider the case of a network function that has processed an adder and sent it back to the switch. At this point, the switch uh, stores the adder in its memory and crafts an RDMA read request for the payload, sending it to the right RDMA server. When the server receives the request, it crafts a response packet with the payload, sending it back to the switch. At this um, we measure the latency introduced by the RDMA interaction, finding that it reaches a maximum value of four microseconds. So uh, this implies that to process one terabit per second of traffic with uh, an average packet size of one kilobytes, we only need to store 500 headers on the switch. That considering an average header size of 72 bytes corresp correspond to 36 kilobytes of memory, which is a feasible value for programmable switches. So now that we have introduced ribosome and its principles, we can take a look at our evaluation. Our testbed is composed by a ribosome, uh, by a ribosome switch directly attached to a dedicated NF server implemented using FastClick and to four RDMA servers. The switch is also attached with other two links to another switch that multicasts the traffic coming from a traffic generator. All the testbed is wired with 100 gigabit per second links. We start our evaluation by examining the throughput gain. Uh, so we want to address the following question. How much ribosome improves the per packet throughput on the NF server? We measure this by running a forwarder as NF and computing the output throughput in gigabit per second with respect to the input packet rate in millions of packets per second. The average packet size injected in the network is of one kilobytes. We tested three systems, a baseline that does not split packets and that is expected as a throughput capped by its network bandwidth of 100 gigabit per second, a payload park-like system that can only store 160 bytes of the payloads into the switch and that only produces a small increment in the output throughput and ribosome that only sends the others to the NF. This experiment shows that ribosome keep, ribosom keeps up the processing of the 300 gigabit per second of input traffic with a bandwidth requirement on the NF of about 20 gigabit per second. Um, in this way, ribosome reaches, uh, achieves a 3x gain with respect to the baseline, enabling a multi-100 gigabit per second packet processing on a 100 gigabit per second link. 
Moreover, we found that our gain is limited by the number of RDMA servers in our, in our testbed. In fact, each RDMA NIC is able to process only 75 gigabit per second due to the overheads introduced by RDMA. So this means that to potentially process one terabit per second of traffic, Ribosome would need 14 shared RDMA servers attached to it. That is a feasible value considering that the data center has thousands of servers. Now we can take a look at how Ribosome impact the latency. Intuitively, we expect that the latency should increase since we delay the packets for recovering the payloads through RDMA. Uh, however, let's see the result. This time, the question is how much Ribosome improves the latency gain on the NF server? For this test, we measured the median latency in microseconds with respect to the input rate in gigabit per second. We tested Ribosome against the baseline buff running the forwarder. Even at medium rate, the latency of the baseline increases, reaching a maximum value of 110 microseconds due to the congestioned queues and the high transmission rate, while Ribosome surprisingly keeps the latency constant to about 25 microseconds. We also investigate the tail latency, ah, oh, oops, <laughs> leading to a for its gain. We also investigate the tail latency, uh, finding that it follows a similar trend with the baseline uh, that reaches a maximum value of 500 microseconds, while Ribosome keeps the latency constant to about 60 microseconds. So even if one would expect that delaying the packets for recovering the payloads through RDMA takes time, the advantage of reducing the queue sizes and the input throughput on the NF compensates, improving the latency gain. Another question that we addressed in our evaluation is, how does the packet size impact the throughput gains? For this test, we measure the output throughput in gigabits per second with respect to the input packet length in bytes. As usual, we tested Ribosome against the, baseline, uh, against the baseline buff running the forwarder. As expected, the baseline has a throughput capped by its network bandwidth of 100 gigabit per second. While Ribosome reaches the 300 gigabit per second goal for all the relevant real world scenarios where the average packet size ranges from 500 bytes to 1 kilobyte. Moreover, uh, we found that uh, Ribosome reaches the 300 gigabit per second already with packets of 400 bytes that correspond to 93 million of packets per second. This demonstrates the ability of the, um, of the NF to handle a such amount of packet that considering an average packet size of 1.5 kilobytes leads to process one terabit per second of traffic. So now we are ready to answer our initial question with a yes, we can process one terabit per second on a single dedicated CPU. Before ending, the last question before, uh, we want to address is, can we build advanced network functions on top of Ribosome? For this test, uh, we measure the output throughput in gigabit per second with respect to the CPU cores assigned to three advanced network functions. The first two are a stateful load balancer and a peak flow rate limiter. Both require keeping track of individual layer for connections. For this network function, Ribosome reaches the goal of 300 gigabit per second, even if the number of CPU cores does not scale linearly, implying that now the bottleneck is moved on the CPU that may not operate at higher rate with these implementations. We found a similar result also testing a state-of-the-art advanced scheduler such as the reframer system, the, um, a system that deliberately delaying packets for improving network performance. We found that Ribosome combined with the reframer reaches a maximum output throughput of 220 gigabit per second. Um, that, however, to put things in perspective is almost a 2.2x speed up with respect to the result obtained in the original paper on Similac Sackberg hardware. So with this final test, we um, uh, show that Ribosome supports advanced network functions and that um, when we demonstrate that uh, Ribosome moves the network function bottleneck on the CPU that now has to manage a huge amount of packets and memory accesses and that cannot operate at line, rain, uh, at line rate for complex tasks. 
Uh, however, we are addressing this issue in a follow-up work, so if you are interested, please stay tuned. To conclude, in this work, we present uh, the ribosome system, uh, the ribosome a system that uh, reduces the amount of dedicated NF processors by carefully sending only the relevant bits. Uh, in our evaluation, we show that ribosome improves the throughput and the latency gain on the NF server, and that it supports complex network functions, achieving a 2.2x speed up with respect to the state of the art for running advanced packet schedulers. Advanced packet schedulers, sorry. Um, finally, uh, we demonstrate that ribosome is the first pipeline able to process one terabit per second on a single dedicated device. So I am at the end. If you have any question, I'm happy to answer. If you want to check out our public implementation, please follow the QR code on the slides. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>